Hi you guys, it's Gabby the Realtor here and you're watching Gabby G in NYC, New York. <laughs> so today we've got a good one for you. One that could be a doozy sometimes. Some people get a little bit confused when it comes to earnest money deposits and down payments. Just like what, what, what? What is the difference? So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So let's just get right into it. But first, here's a disclaimer. In New York City, earnest money deposits aren't really done. What happens is a buyer would put down a large deposit, which we call contract deposit. This is typically 10% of the sale price or half of your down payment. And this is put down after contracts are signed. Contract deposits are common in New York City. When it comes to earnest money deposits, that not happening in the city, but it happens in other parts of New York State. So just remember, when it comes to contract deposits, that comes after a signed contract. In terms of earnest money deposit, that's a totally different thing. And since I've gotten questions about this, I'm gonna jump into that now. So let's go. An earnest money deposit is money that the buyer puts into escrow. Escrow is a neutral third party who usually holds on to something, typically cash, until a transaction between buyer and seller is complete. According to DaveRamsey.com, it's likened unto a referee in a football game. Neutral to both sides, no skin in the game, but make sure it's that both parties play fair. The job of an escrow account is to ensure a fair and smooth transaction in a real estate deal from beginning to end. As I was saying, an earnest money deposit is when a buyer puts money into an escrow account after the seller accepts their offer. So if your offer hasn't been accepted yet, you don't have to worry about this. But once the seller says, yes, that offer sounds like a mighty good deal to me, then you as the buyer can offer up an earnest money deposit in good faith to show that you are serious about this deal, honey. And the reason that it shows that you're so serious about this deal is that you actually risk losing it. If you back out of the deal or any other kind of thing that's not in the contingencies, of course, um, that breaches our contract, then uh, yeah, you could lose your earnest money deposit. Let's just not do that. An EMD is usually about one or two percent of the purchase price, but it can go as high as 10%. It really all depends on the purchase price and buyer and what's going on with the finances. An EMD is never given directly to a seller, but it can be cashed out into the escrow account and then credited to the buyer at closing or just go towards their down payment. With an EMD, what the buyer is agreeing to do is pay a percentage of the purchase price into an escrow account for safekeeping. And what the seller is agreeing to do is to remove that property from the market. So it could be no longer available for anyone else. No more showing, mm -mm. no more open houses, none of that. But that's because they're banking on you and in good faith, they're relying that you are actually going to take this house because you left money on it already and that means you're serious. Not many people have heard of or used the term earnest money deposit, but everyone's heard of a down payment. That's what everybody's like, I'm saving for my down payment, honey, I'm saving for my down payment. That's what everyone has heard of, the down payment. So let's get into what that means. Now a down payment is money that's paid directly to the seller at closing. Um, it's what you're gonna wanna save up and it ranges from 3.5 to 20% of the purchase price. 
you can pay via bank transfer or a cashier's check. But the more down payment you have, the lower your monthly mortgage payment. Whenever you're paying a lower down payment, like the 3.5s, then you are likely going to be charged a PMI, or private mortgage insurance, which can be about 1% of the purchase price. But that's just additional money that you're gonna be paying monthly on your mortgage for the entire term. So some people who can, if you can avoid that by going with a conventional loan, then that's the way to go to avoid the PMI. But if you're unable to do so, you can still purchase a house with lower down payment, but it just means that you're, you're probably gonna be paying more monthly um, because of that insurance. So if you're able to, leaving an earnest money deposit is really quite an advantage. Um, but if you're not, a good down payment also is great. Don't forget, you're also gonna need to pay closing costs. We can talk about that at another date. But just so you know, they're quite, there's quite a lot involved in a real estate transaction. But with a good real estate agent, they'll be able to walk you through it step by step. Step by step. Yeah. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I hope that I was able to make this make sense. Make it make sense. There's just so much going on in real estate. So hopefully little by little, as you learn the terms and phrases and everything, it just all gets a little bit easier for you. So I hope that's what I did, was to make this a little bit easier to understand. But um, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, please leave it below. And I just ask that you subscribe and I will be bringing you more and more and more videos um, to come on real estate and other topics. Thank you so much for watching. Love you guys. Mwah!